Okay, so anyway, until we start, uh, happy to be again here. It's my second year. Uh, my role here is mostly out of delegation from other people. So I'm not uh, as good in this stuff as you are, most of you. Uh, but I'm really happy to be around here and I'm learning a lot of stuff every time. Uh, it's a really nice also meeting point with many of you that we meet very few. And, uh, well, we're going to present something that is actually an outcome of uh, Battle Mess itself. So don't think that we're appropriating the word. <laughs> uh, we're going to present a Webed, which is uh, a test, but actually a platform and this microphone? Okay, sounds better. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's a platform for performing experiments uh, with uh, wireless mesh protocols mostly, that's what it's designed for, but you can do other stuff also. Anyway, the idea is it's something that came out of the battle mesh uh, and this is the most important thing and it uh, became something more and we're getting into more details. Well, by the way, I'm Manos, he's Igor, we're both from UPC and there are here many guys also from Giffinet helping us and uh, the people who started, probably some of you know them, were uh, Pau and Gui and uh, Nico. Uh, and then they hand over the work to other people, to new generations, and there are going to be more. Uh, yeah, so about what is Webed? From the one part is a software platform uh, that's uh, AMD deploy network experiments that uh, reach uh, to lower layers than usually. So, for example, uh, the usual testbed platforms usually are with virtualization or uh, technologies that do not allow you to reach uh, in uh, uh, getting information or even tuning, uh, let's say, drivers, for example, or other uh, whatever you're interested in. Uh, so it's consisted of an OpenWRT platform that can be deployed easily. So in other words, it can also be used as a fast way to deploy meshes, but this is not, of course, very recommended. Uh, well, it's designed to run on, commod on commodity routers, like uh, so the main routers we're going to use this year, like last year, the TP-Link WTR, this uh, 4,300. And, uh, uh, it can be compiled also with other devices. Last year we were experimenting with some of them, so if any of you is interested, uh, of course, uh, we can try to help about uh, the compilation, but uh, it's a challenge that you are welcome to take. Uh, and then, yeah, how it started. As I said, it's already something that's coming from the battle mesh. Uh, it was also uh, incubated somehow from in a European project, so uh, it can be maintained and evolved. Uh, the project is uh, Confine Community Lab. It's a project that had uh, UPC, the, my university in Barcelona. Uh, and for generic information, I think that well, if you know something more or if you want to know something more, you can always keep asking. You want to add something? Uh, yeah, a bit about the architectures for those who are new or for those who don't remember. Uh, the main idea is very simple. Uh, you have a set of nodes, and uh, these nodes, there are also some gateways, and these nodes through these gateways connect to a server. So from the server, you the main idea is to, that the user only needs to access the server in order to deploy his experiment. It has a web interface. The user goes there, he selects the nodes he wants to use, and then you can deploy your experiment. And we're going to see more details about how this happens. Uh, the nodes, uh, more or less, inside an experiment and in general behave like a finished state machine. Not very important, they do all the same stuff. Uh, uh, an interesting information you're going to see later is that uh, the nodes that we have chosen, and uh, last year there were more ideas, but maybe we can work on this year are actually need two wireless interfaces, one for the management network and one for the experiment network. There was last year the suggestion to use, uh, for example, Ethernet for the management network and then have both interfaces or for devices who have only one interface uh, that can be used also for experiments. 
uh, but uh, I think there is no evolution up to now for that, but we can work on it this year also. Uh, well, uh, the nodes actually follow a pooling uh, logic where every 15 seconds, in this case, they ask the server for the new information, so the user puts uh, the commands on the server, the nodes keep on pooling uh, about new requests or new information, and they return data also from experiments or data about their status. Uh, the web server I mentioned, uh, OpenW tree trunk, I'm gonna say later about which version and I'm gonna say a bit more stuff about this event. Uh, mm, yeah, actually it's implemented, so Webet is implemented like a, uh, a standard uh, uh, OpenWRT build route plus some ex an extra OpenWRT package uh, which uh, can be installed, which is actually uh, maintains the communication with the node, with the server, not much more than it. Uh, and the management network is based on Batman Advance, which brings a lot of good stuff and also brings bugs to be solved at the last moment. <laughs> As we saw today. <laughs> also. Yeah, and also since we have two interfaces, we have the possibility to do many stuff, and with the management network and with the experiment network. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, from the hardware point of view, uh, well. The intention of this slide actually was to make it visible that it, in general, is a generic uh, platform. But okay, it must be compatible. It, you must be able to install uh, OpenWRT with uh, minimum four megabytes of flash. So mm -hmm. if you have, want to add new devices, you should consider this. Um, the node must have at least two radios, but as we discussed, there is the option that we work again this year about the Ethernet interface for management network uh, thing. And another thing that the nodes must have at least one USB port, because as we'll see later, that's where the overlay, if you don't know, I will explain later, of the experiment is stored. Uh, yeah, this is, actually I will post also the slides this is more interesting probably for people who are going to perform experiments. I don't know, I was thinking, mostly there is no team for performing the experiments except from designing. Mostly? <laughs> Very occupied. <laughs> uh, so do we define a team about performing the experiments except from designing? Like last year we had, I think Axel was developing some scripts about that was were run into Webed and stuff like that. We already have something on the repo, I will talk about trailer, but uh, do we need a team like that or in theory a, the team of Amadeus is responsible for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is responsible. Okay. So yeah, I was just saying yeah, <coughs> someone coordinates so if Amadeus is happy to do it, that would be best. So someone else and no, but, but that's the one part. The other part is how to put this on the on the Webit yeah, <laughs> as an experiment. That and that last year was. Oh. So okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you both. Uh, so this, if anyone wants more information, you can. Uh, I don't think there is a point presenting it now. <coughs> Uh, about the overlay, I said thing I said before. So the idea is that uh, 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 using this uh, feature of OpenWRT, uh, nodes are actually able to have a separate ROM file system and a separate ROM overlay, which means that uh, you boot your device and uh, you have a standard file system, and you also have something like a diff of a file system that you load with the changes you want on top. And so this allows you, of course, to have many different overlays and keep on changing the file system without actually changing the original one. So this, uh, this means that you can deploy experiments uh, using, for example, the ROM overlay, and then you can reboot and use the experiment overlay, which is going to be on the USB. And when you reboot again, you can have your original image. 
so your original firmware. Uh, so the, that's the idea behind the overlay file system. I don't know if, if you are confused with that. Yeah, sure, uh, in a more clear way. There is an image also about that. So, uh, in, <coughs> sorry. Uh, in general, as I said, the nodes are like finished state machines. So they have, they, they have a standard state, which is the idle state, and they have, uh, let's say, for simplification, another state, which is the experiment state. When they are in the standard state, they use uh, the ROM overlay, as you can see. Okay? Uh, so this is, uh, uh, let's say, like uh, the standard firmware plus uh, the changes of the ROM overlay, which is like a diff in the file system with new or deleted files. Uh, when, we, when you go into experiment mode, what you do is that you reboot the node and you mount the, the experiment overlay, which is located on the USB memory. Okay? So this means that the user can do whatever he wants there. He can try to delete whatever he wants, and then you can, again, he can break the device, which is not unrecoverable. That's the only thing you cannot change. Uh, but if he doesn't break the device, you can reboot after finishing the experiment and having your original configuration. Okay. Yeah, it, it's the same idea. Implemented the overlay FS that is provided by OpenWR2. Uh, about the configuration file, well, also, I don't think I need to explain many stuff except if you're interested, since except from the people that will work with the experiments that we can do that in person. At the Webet server, well, if you wanted to know, it's a Tornado web server and it's uh, a Flask application using SPLite. There is a REST API for communication with the nodes. Also, there is some kind of REST API for communication with uh, the users, and this will be useful for getting results and stuff like that, so we can talk this with the persons responsible for that. And specifically about this event, for those who want already maybe to experiment with their packets, and uh, uh, we're using this OpenWRT trunk, this version, and uh, uh, the, the firmware, with some slight modifications, is uh, uh, located on the GitHub. Well, actually, we will have to merge uh, with this version. This, this one is not the latest one, so we will update it. It will be updated today. Yeah. So this is actually the OpenWRT build root with some extra utilities. and. I wrote it like that because it's the GitHub. How you get is githubcom slash battlemes slash webet. Uh, and the overlay, so actually the overlay that I said before that's going to use for the experiments, we have the one that was used last year. So this is the base start for this year also. And it's in the GitHub again, battlemes slash webet battlemes experiments. And it has, a, so it's actually a set of scripts and some extra OpenWRT packages in order not to download them uh, that are mounted during the experiment time. Uh, yeah, any questions about deployment or about where to deploy and stuff like that? Mostly the responsible one. You want to say some stuff for that? Yeah, sure. So to avoid confusion as we had it before, um, we have a map where all those sockets are mapped out and we'll be you know, strictly putting nodes there and noting down like a unique ID for everyone. So don't just go and move nodes about without making sure I know where it is so we can put it on the map and keep it updated. And also, all the Wi-Fi routers and things you brought here, put the label on it with your name so at the end we don't have a pile of things from people who, you know, have left and uh, we have no idea what to do with that stuff then. All right? Sure. Good. Yeah. So, so 
So, so the packages of the protocols are, uh, last year were located there also? Yeah, last year. Yeah, so the idea is to get uh, from its uh, interested party from the protocols the, a package that's compatible with this uh, version of OpenWRT and put it inside uh, uh, this uh, repo, as Axel said. So we can deploy directly to the node and they are available there, no? Good. Uh, about the experiments concerning how the experiments are going to be done, what type of experiments, and then uh, what type of measurements also, which I think is something that also already some scripts existing in the, in the Wibet Battlemass experiment repo. Uh, in general, Amadeus is responsible. That's back there, wearing the glasses, trying not to look, <laughs> not to say hi. Uh, and uh, some extra. Okay, so uh, today's offer. Only for today we have uh, <laughs> we have an offer uh, to to use the specific uh, kernel paths that will be able to allow us to have information, low-level information about some. Uh, counters from the interfaces. Do you want to say something more? Uh, yeah, it's a 50 line kernel patch with a Mac subsystem and it adds 7 bytes to any beacon that is sent. And it is 7 bytes derived with the average over the last seconds of the uh, how low level the channel was. So all transmitters, not Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the reason I'm referring to this in this presentation and to everyone is that, okay, it's something that is a kernel patch. So, if we, it's a decision we all make. If we decide to go for it, maybe the in the end things don't work. Maybe they work better. We have more information. So, people who grant us the protocols are able to to decide whether we go with that or not. And we can discuss it later, just so you know it. Uh, and then about the protocol packages we already we clarified with Axel where they should be, so probably each protocol should have the package, we should upload it to the repo there. Yeah, and I think uh, more or less that's it. No more, except uh, if you want to say something. We uh, did Yeah, also she brought seven nodes. So uh, for sponsored hardware, we have 
in the meantime, <laughs> anything else? Some questions or? Not for us. First, we have from ARM University. I'm going to share them around. Uh, feel free to take one if you want to play it after the event. Um, something not to take home, which is we'll use them in our network. But for uh, start, are this uh, like wave, or actually, previous name was Deliberant, um, 5 gigahertz, 2 by 2 MIMO devices. Uh, so they run the Terra chipset, and like these are all new devices, 15 dB one. Um, a 20 dB one, and on the pole you can see a dish with a feed which is 28 dB. Um, so these devices are uh, very nice actually because uh, they have enough flash and by in stock, they run two firmwares. Uh, so firmware one and firmware two. We managed to, so they sent us their uh, patches for OpenWRT. We managed to add them in the builder so we can build OpenWRT images for that. And actually overwrite just the first firmware with OpenWRT image. Um, so you can just run that and if that fails, for any reason, it just defaults back to their factory firmware. Um, so that's very nice for testing. Now, um, we received... Um, so what would be nice to do during this week is we have those patches in our repository somewhere, work out a proper patch for these devices for OpenWRT. The problem is only so, yeah, someone needs to have a go at that. Uh, it's really nice to have dual firmware support and all that, but if you want to run stock open WRT, you would need to change bootloader on these devices, which you can either do through first flashing an open RT, which you can then rewrite the bootloader directly, or having a serial port attached, which is not nice. But from our perspective, I would say it's very good to have two firmwares on it in any case, so maybe we should keep that function. Um, so these small ones, we have, um, there are like nine of them here. So if you guys build a white bed also for that, uh, should be perfect. Uh, we can start using this ones as well, um, but do leave them here after the event. Um, we have a number of links deployed with bigger antennas with this ones and the dishes in our VLAN Slovenia network. So if we want to do some long range Wi-Fi tests, point to multipoint, things like that, uh, we have stuff deployed, so uh, we can test it and compare it to a Ubiquiti link, which is set up in parallel to this new equipment. And on, I believe, Friday and Saturday, the guys from this LIGO-A company will come, their manager and a developer, so you, know, you can go ahead, straight ahead and ask questions. Um, so yeah, they are being much nicer than any other vendor so far. Um, for community networking, so at least they're keen on providing any information we need to do OpenWRT support, which is, yeah, more than we've seen so far. Um, so, yeah, whoever wants, just come and see me and we'll sort out things. Um, we have some devices which have serial port on them already, so you can go ahead and uh, just use that for debugging and development. Um, yeah, so that's kind of roughly entering. So we have this stuff from equipment and yeah, the low power kits if you want to play with sensors. Um, yeah, that's it from my side. Any more questions for Muski? Uh, if you already took out the microphone, no more questions for him. Uh, okay, so you want to ask something? No. <laughs> yeah, you looked very Interesting. Uh, okay, so about the question uh, about other devices. Uh, yeah, mm, mainly the idea is that we tried last year, 
but since uh, the first of first importance is to build a testbed, uh, after we finish, uh, for sure, and we, if we decide also we try the kernel patch and everything, and everything is stable, we can try play with those. Uh, there are some people here that do have experience with that. Uh, if you're interested, for example, in what Moose said with this device, uh, you can come, of course, talk with us, and we try together to compile it. Because, uh, well, in reality, Webet doesn't need much, except from the that has to be from the size uh, limitation. The two antennas is not really necessary limitation if we have uh, Ethernet connection or blah 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 for the management network. Uh, so compiling it is just. Uh, one extra OpenWRT package, so nothing really weird, except from the size limitation. There is... Okay, yeah, so we... Th we have some experience, but we can work on it more. Okay, uh, any other thing? Uh, uh, that's exactly that, what it allows. Just want to use the separate part of the testbed for your experiments, right? Well, just want to make sure it's a scale, so, um, so is it possible tomorrow Here. to borrow sufficient drivers to test the battle? Yes, for example, this depends on how you, you, uh, how you perform the uh, the experiment. So once you build, <coughs> sorry, once you we install, then you can choose which node you want to experiment with. You don't have to experiment with all the nodes. But then this depends on how the topology is done. Other than that, uh, Amadeus had a plan that it's possible for experiments to test also uh, how nodes perform really close to each other if that's what you use. So maybe you can fit in that plan. Uh, if your own plan is not trying to test with the whole test, but specific nodes, or what is exactly your idea of the topology you want to have? On that, uh, I just want to make sure the existing configuration setup is correct first. Ah, so having a testing test. Yes. Sure. Uh, in theory, that's what we were going to mount today, but since uh, we're waiting for some two patches, uh, Experiments, the data that you're going to draw for maybe like 
but it should be something a bit dedicated, even if a lot. I don't think resources are a big of a problem, but it should be a bit dedicated, at least for the experiments part. For now, we can also deploy it uh, in some lab, for example, even, uh, I mean, for testing the test, but as was said before, we can do it. Maybe the dedicated machine shall not be dedicated for us, but real machine stuff, right? No, not necessarily. We, we will see it's new data. We never try the server in a pet device. All you need is, I told you, a bit Python, the packets, these packets of Python, 